<laughs> hey people, Rock and Puppet, and this is how to draw a near traditional rockabilly girl. Enjoy. Right, people, how to draw a near traditional rockabilly girl. So, we're going to start off with, as per usual, the magic circle. I'm going to cut the side just a little bit inside the inner circle. I'm going to bring a line out, bring it down, bring it across, and bring it back into the circle. So you've got that sort of shape. Bring the line down the centre bit, and across. So this is the basic sort of structure of the face. So you imagine nose, chin, jaw, head. So we're going to start off with... Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. What shall we start with? Let's start with the nose. So we've got this line down here. And bring this line out. Make it so you've got a little bit of a curve, not too much. And once you get to that point there, we're going to bring it back. Just me inside a bit of this, just come and bring a little line from this tip inwards, just run here. Bring a little circular shape and a little line, just in. Curving underneath that and around it, we're going to make the nostril. So this is going to curve quite big around that sort of circle bit there. Then we're going to do a little line just above that. The little line's going to go above, down, and just curve around that part of the nose. This nostril part here is going to come down and connect onto that line. And the tip of that line, we're going to bring this line up, bend it in towards us a little bit, bend it out and up. From the center part of this nostril, it's going to bring a little line up, curve it in a little bit, just kind of tells the shape of that inner part of the nose. Now from underneath this bit, we're going to curve a little line up, come down, until we pretty much about touch this line just here. And from here we're going to curve the line down. Now if you imagine this line from the nose, we'll want a bit, bit, little bit steeper than that. So come down, come back just a little bit past the nostril, I quite like to do. Bring a line, come to the side there, come back up, and point it down to that point just there. Now crest your upper lip, off the bottom of that, just bring a circle shape out, a bit further in from this line, but making it so it sort of touches that line. And you want to make this a little bit a bit wider than this top lip. I'm just going to curve that just back like that. Underneath this, we're going to come back a little bit back from the lip, curve the line out, come down. You can it depends on how strong you want the chin. You can have a touch in this line, or just a little bit further back from it. I'm going to have it a touch bit further back. And that line can come back out over there for now. Now just off this little curve here, doing a circular shape, just curving off of this chin, create a circle shape just here. Well this is just plotting out all the kind of different shading areas, you know, so you get that kind of near traditional vibe. Now we've got that, we sort of plot the eye. So we've got this line here. So just reinforce that line a bit, just a little bit past that halfway line. And then what you'll do is come from this line, curve line coming around like so. So it would touch that nostril as you start to bend, just there. And then that little line just there is going to be the base of our eye. It's going to come here and flick this line just off there. Going to curve a little line just up so it goes into this line. Now you can go further out, depends on how wide you want the eye open. I'm not going to have this eye open that much. A little curve now, just for the pupil part. And I'm going to have this line curving out, flicking up the eyelashes. And now if this area is small just here, you want the upper part to be a bit higher. So I'm going to curve this up, like so. And I'm that connecting there. I like this line to be a little bit further forward than the pupil is, because obviously this is the eyelid that sits over the front of it. 
if you imagine from there, you sort of bring a line up pretty much to where this line will sort of connect here. And that's where we're going to start the eyebrow. That's going to come back. It's about there. And I'm going to bring this up. Connect it back up there. So from this nose, I'm going to bring a little line just there, just out of touch. And the eyebrow just forward to touch, actually, just there. Give this up. And back around so it kind of connects back up to that circle shape just there. Now from where that curve is just under there, I'm going to curve a little line. And it's going to circle back into that bottom part of the eye just there. Coming from the back here, if you imagine sketching a little line just cutting towards that mouth part. So that sort of line just there. And then I'm going to sketch a line around the outside. Curve back around. Curve down and following a little line just down by the jaw. And that's going to tell the shading in the cheek. So you can see the face starting to build up now. Little circle line just there, just to show the forehead shading. And that goes up. That's going to be rockabilly this one, so if you imagine the ear. Let's sit here. I'm not going to do all the ear because I want a bandana. And the bandana in Rockabilly Girls usually always goes over their ear. So I'm going to bring this line across. Pretty much where this connects it, just up there to there. Bring this line out. Quite wide. And as you go here, it's getting thinner, so this gap gets smaller. Because the bow is tied on the front. So this circle. Two parts for the bow. And then you've got the hair. Now the hair can be any sort of choice you want. I'm going to go for a typical kind of rockabilly sort of front. So I'm going to bring the curve out. Look into it. And it'll be curving like so. I have a little curve of hair just under here. So you're going to get a little hint of it just there. And a little flick of hair just curving off. Just here, just above the ear. Back of the head. And there's circle shape circle shape and one bit of back just there now the lines will be the key to the detailing on this bit and you'll see that as we do all the detailing parts the line's going to go down the neck and the cheek uh, not cheek the neck so we'll come down from that mouth line just there Going off that part of the neck just there. I'm going to make this almost kind of like a plimp, so I'm going to bring this neckline just down, just there, curve. Curve this bit down here. When it gets here, you've got like this little S curve bend. And then just offer this, going to paint this bold a bit more. So it goes like so. Which is in the front now. And this will be full of traditional, near traditional oval shapes. Have a little bit of a light just there. Some little leafy bits just on the outside, like so. Now, done that, I'm just going to grab my pen. Putting all the bold line in first, and then I come back and do the more fine line details. So I'm just going to use a sharpie for the bold outline. Now I go pretty quick with this. Take your time. Or if you feel I go too slow, I go faster. But just go at your pace. Don't feel like you have to go quicker or slower. It's just whatever you want to go at your speed. You know, speed makes absolutely no difference. Now, I'm not going to do all the lines with this, just the main bold outline.
just does it for that bit. And grab me fine liner if I can find it. Was you here two seconds ago? Where did you go? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Where the bloody hell did he go? Damn, two seconds. There it is, right in front of me. It's always 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 like right in front of you. So yeah, I'm going to come on the final line details now. I'm just going to use the thin tip on this. So this is, um, actually I'll start with a thicker line. Put this uh, bit. So I want to get three different line weights. You've got a Sharpie pen, which is quite thick. I'm going to come in now with this one. Which is slightly thinner. And I'm going to use this for the next level kind of detail bit. So a bit around the nostril. A bit in the ear. Some of the hairlines. So, best you're just putting a curve here and just repeating this curve and all around that way. Send me inside that. And it'll be the same on these parts as well, so. I mean, this way doing the hair is probably more old school than neo traditional, but just because it's old school doesn't mean you can't throw it in with the neo traditional. You know, neo traditional is just basically new forms of traditional tattoos. The only one's going to be slightly different is this one, because I want the curve to kind of go that way, and as it gets to the center, switch direction. And curve the other way. Now, just in here, like I said, it's going to do the oval shapes. You can take your time with these, make sure these are perfect if you want. I'm just plotting them in. It's just literally just repeating oval shapes, getting larger as they come across. Very typical of neo traditional toes. This So, line for that cheek bit, and now I'm going to come in with a thin liner and do those little details where I can around the nose and everything. So I can go there and down there. All those little shading lines. You don't necessarily have to have these. It's just very, it's just very typical of near traditional style. Just to have the lines kind of plotting it out. Two little lines just at the top, and this will just be polka dot on the inside. It's like so. If I can grab me. I'm losing everything today. I'm just going to grab me a compass just to quickly plot in a little bit of circle just around the face. Just like so. Grab the slightly thicker line.
watch them. Let's put on some basic leaves. I mean, these leaves are pretty much just to uh, build up and shape the design. And that's mainly what leaves are usually used for. Cool. There's no done that. Grey rubber. You may want to give your design time to dry, depending on the kind of pens you're using. Mine's pretty quick drying on this kind of paper so I can rub it out and not have to worry too much. Now it's going to use Windsor Newton brush markers. You can use any kind of like colouring you want. Don't feel like you have to use the same as me. It's whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever works for you. Just initially with some basic flesh stones. God, I keep headbutting this damn thing. There we go. Just for the basic bits. I'm gonna start with the bits that are kind of sitting more forward and up. Once it's done, I'm going to use a slightly bluer tone. And I will come back in with stronger colours in a minute. So, where we've done those lines, I'm just kind of like almost colouring in. You can colour them in dead solid if you want. I'm going to flick in, kind of shade around them. Off with this, then he's out of touch. Like I said, very important to remember as well. Like with marker pens, they wet the paper so they will drill. Uh, drill. They will dry <laughs> lighter than when you first initially put them on. For instance, this one's going to pretty much vanish out to nothing. As you can start to see now, it's starting to dry a little bit. Now that all depends on the kind of paper you're using really. Some paper is a bit different than others. It's going to grab me a grey tone now. This one's like a medium dark. It's going to put this where the shading is underneath. So like under the nose, under the eye. You know, it's a bit hard to sort of work it out, but just try, just try and think where the, where the shading be from underneath. Let's go in a lighter grey now. Just blend those edges out. Good thing with these kind of markers, you can really just kind of work over the edge and it just blends them. Similar to how water paints are, you know, or pencils, you know, sort of blending, you know, it's... Works the exact same way. That's why you can use any materials to do my tutorials, because they all kind of work very similar. Now I've done that, it's going to grab me a slightly stronger flesh tone now. Just 
bring in some little bits. So now I've got the shape, I can start to get the right tones I want. to one again. That's going to come in with that blue tone. It's going to come out quite grey on here. Now, unfortunately, you can't quite. The camera never shows the quite proper colour of this, but yeah. So this is like a very like baby blue. Using this mainly on those little underparts we talked about. Just blend those out. Use a comedian marker for this one. Where's my blender? Oop, no. So, comedian pens have a blender tip. You basically push it in, it can actually hold it. I've used mine quite a while, so I have to hold mine for a little bit longer to get the full effect. But you'll see a little tipping just here. If I can hold this right so you can see the tip. And once the tip goes sort of a bit transparent, that's how you know when you've got it right. Like I said, it's not normally this long, it's just my one's going a little bit dry and to top it up. So you see it come out transparent to begin with, you just keep going and eventually that colour comes out. Just makes it very easy to blend it out. So, yeah, so there, I literally just want a little bit of red just around the eye. I'll do that section. Um, get some damn lids. Red just in the lips. And I'm going to get me black. Start doing the hair. So, one does, but a couple of black strips just coming across it. Just there. Just here. Basically, just leaving little strips out. And 
you can't, you're pretty much cutting through the lines, so don't go in the same direction as the lines, or cut through them. Like so. It looks a bit weird in a minute. Do that, get your grey. Just work over that edge, just blend it out. Be careful not to join things up yet, because you want to go down another shade. And at this stage you can join the lines up if you want, like so, but you can leave a little gap in the middle, I'll show you just here. It depends on how strong a highlight you want in the hair. But you can do a mix of both, like I've just done there, a bit of a mix. Bit of a shadow just on this bandana now. Just a little bit inside, inside gaps. They were just there and there. Blend that out. It's going to be sharpie, it's going to colour in those polka dots. Uh, bandana you can do any kind of colour you want. I'm going to go for red. The lipstick just kind of bring it through. It looks quite good yellow, purple, and other colours as well. colour in this background bit here, just yellow. It's going to come out a bit mustardy because of the paper. But I quite like that. And lastly, put that green. One thing you guys probably notice from me, I'm forever losing my stuff. I did it like two minutes ago. There it is. This one's a very kind of earthy green. I quite like the earthy green colour. But remember, it's your artwork. You know, you can make it any colour you want. You can make these bloody pink or purple if you want. Do it half green, half brown.
Do -do -do -do. Got an orange. Just to kind of contrast it out. So just colouring in those little gaps in between those circles, or labels rather. So, now it's going to get my white highlight. Just a few little bits, nothing too major. Just a little spark on the nose, a little bit of the lip. And cheek, a bit of the eye. Like so, and lastly, this is completely optional. It's too strong. That's perfect. See, so yeah, I'm just going to give a little tattoo on the neck. Just so we've got old school rose. I love to put tattoos on these kind of ones. Crazy, just basic old school rows. Little symbol just underneath the eye. Little X. No major. Done it over there. Well, that'll do it. That's how to draw a near traditional. Rockabilly girl. Hope you like it. Check out my other videos. Comment, subscribe, like, yada 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 yada. You guys know the usual routine. And a broken puppet. And I'll see you next time. Peace.